All right, here we go. This is a tutorial that's going to go over some of the stuff we went in class and then some of the stuff that we did not get to fully go over in class, unfortunately. Um, so this first part, um, I'm kind of just going to repeat the same steps that we did in class um, so that we can just have a recap of that. So I'm going to create my orange in here. Um, now some of my uh, I have my orange photos in here that I can look at and kind of see uh, what my shape should be like. Um, so without further ado, uh, I'm going to start and create my quad ball. I'm going to make it bigger like this. Um, there we go. And I'm going to smooth that guy. I think I'm going to go up to three subdivisions this time. In the demo, I only did two, but I'm going to go all the way up to three. Um, and I'm going to repeat some of the things I did in class. I'm going to create uh, on the top, kind of trying to replicate this area. I kind of want this little indentation. Um, and I could technically just kind of play around with this up here, but I think it would look better if I extruded that in. So I'm going to mess around with that a little bit. Um, again, I might um, grab some of these and average vertices a little bit. Uh, maybe go around hitting the G key to just do that on individual faces. I mean, on uh, individual verts real quick. And uh, yeah, so nothing too uh, crazy in there, but I just want something to represent that area up top. And the other thing that I'm going to do, like I did in class, is uh, create my lattice deformer and put an extra division in the middle. You can technically have as many divisions as you'd like, but it becomes more difficult to handle all of the different points uh, once you have a lot of different directions and different... Um, uh, points it's basically like modeling with a whole bunch of vertices versus a low poly thing so um, that's, that might be a little bit too off kilter for the the bottom but again remember that asymmetry as we discussed in class asymmetry is the key to um, getting an organic looking thing especially in a piece of fruit um, because at no point in history has there ever been a completely spherical uh, fruit, especially a citrus fruit. They're always very a little misshapen on the the sides. Um, so again, I'm not going to stress out too much about this. I kind of like this look, this kind of fat oval. So I'm just going to delete my history. I'm going to name this orange base mesh and that's what I'm going to save out now um, before I go actually I want to do one more thing I'm going to grab this edge in the middle I think it's sticking out too much and I'm going to just use the edit edge flow tool to kind of um, dampen that edge a little bit nice and smooth but yet still lumpy uh, so whoops now I have to redelete my history um, so a very important thing, don't forget to check your UVs. We can't just go into Mudbox with these UVs. While this technically represents all the geometry in here, it's not laid out in an accurate way. And we don't really see this part up at the top that we extruded out. So I'm going to just unfold first. That should be fine for this one. There's no real need to do anything else. Um, if you wanted to unwrap it a different way, that's your call, but I'm just going to at least make my UVs look like this. Sometimes I also like to, just to check, I like to run the optimize tool, unfold 3D, blah, 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 the rest of it's kind of whatever. And that'll tweak the UVs a little bit, but in this case it's not super noticeable. And last but not least, this is sticking out way outside of the box here. And so I'm just going to scale that down, but uh, ultimately it doesn't really matter too much as long as uh, 
we have a little bit of wiggle room between the edge of the box um, just because of the displacement map eventually and the normal map somebody's uh, walking outside next door so um, I'm just gonna leave it like this I could technically check my tracker pattern and again these seams will be overlooked by the power of sculpting and the power of painting so as long as we get a nice uniform square grid that's the important thing here so uh, just look for that in your UVs and now we're pretty much ready to go we don't need to save out a UV snapshot or anything like that all of that is going to be taken care of uh, by Mudbox so uh, I'm going to save this file this Maya file I don't know why uh, my Maya recently has been not going to the correct folder right away. Uh, I'm going to call this orange ragni orange base mesh uh, and I'm also going to save that as a, as a Maya file on my ASCII and I'm also going to now export this as an FBX an FBX um, and there's a lot of options in the FBX um, I'm not sure which one of these like the perfect conditions would be but we don't need animation we don't need cameras we don't need lights we're really just looking to export the mo uh, the model but at the end of the day if you left that stuff on it's not a huge deal so I'm actually just, I'm gonna put this in the scenes folder, um, but technically you might want to be more organized. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. Uh, so I'm gonna just make a um, exports. Uh, I'll name this. I'll use a better naming convention. Orange exports at least. Made it a little more specific. And in here, I can say orange uh, base mesh export. And we are good to go. Um, cool. When I come back to Maya, I'm actually going to open up a new scene um, for this. So I'm going to open up a scene that has a, a uh, kind of an environment in it instead of just reimporting into this. So for right now, I'm just going to literally hit new scene. And meanwhile, oh, so that's the end of video number one.